Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I posted a video. I told you guys I was buying a house down in Orlando, so we finally closed on the house. We're actually in the house today, prepping the garage to get a new coating. Decided to go with the Rust-Oleum Rock Solid, so I'll go ahead and show you guys what I got. So I decided to go with the rock solid metallic silver bullet high gloss. So this one was the ones I saw a bunch of people using on their floors and turned out pretty well. What you get is the burst pack, which is the part A and part B. You get the roller and you get the etch. The one thing I noticed, they changed it up a little bit. A lot of the YouTube videos I watched, they actually showed the mixing in some metallic, but it looks like they must have added the metallic already to the pre-mix in this particular kit because I didn't see it and then I looked on the box and it shows right here you only get four items instructions you get the etch you get the roller and then you get the the burst pack one of the things with these rollers is they don't recommend that you use these rollers because they leave behind too much of the stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and go pick up some purdy ones the purdy ones the white dove ones are the ones that they really recommend that you use the professionals because they won't lint off on the floor I'm gonna try to avoid these I'm gonna just save these for regular paint not this epoxy to top off my coating I decided to pick up the rock saw a top coat so this is the clear coat that goes on top of it just to add another layer of protection I picked up this one kit right here that covers up to 450 to 500 square feet on a coated surface. I actually picked up two of these kits because in a minute I'll show you how big my garage is here that we're doing today. So what I ended up getting in this house was a three car garage with a single tandem. So it's essentially a four car garage. It's 850 square feet. So I've got over there, that's a single car garage on the end. This is the double car that we're standing in right here. And then the double car, that middle part goes in deep. Little section back here starting from this wall right here over is another car garage which is considered the fourth car garage this is really going to be my work area and my bench area and everything that's what I'm going to end up using over here and then back here I'm going to keep the cars probably keep the van over here in the single car and then my two cars over here and whatever I'm working on the double car side I might end up putting a lift right about here because the problem I have now compared to what I used to have is the ceilings the ceiling heights in here so over there there's actually a dip area that it barely touches the garage in here at least I get another like 18 inches to two feet of height. I could put one of those uh, max jacks from bin pack right in this section into my shop and back here so I could actually work on it on this section, which is actually going to be better uh, if I put that lift here because then I could, you know, be close to the shop and then have a car kind of halfway in, halfway out of the two sections. So the rock solid Curamine, what they tell you is this thing covers up to 100 to 125 square feet per box, right? So essentially for each one car garage, they recommend two boxes. Uh, most people online that, I, that have done this, they recommend using at least three kits per garage. So I ended up ordering 12 total kits for the four car garage in here. So for each one of these little square sections that they have, I'm gonna have to use about one and a half kits to cover that. In their instructions, they assume that you could do that one square section there with one pack, but I doubt that it's gonna give you good coverage once it smooths out. I wanted to make sure that I had plenty, so I'm gonna make sure I use all of it and lay it on really thick when I end up pouring it out and rolling it. So here's a few more supplies that you might need when you're doing this process. You need some spike shoes. So I bought these cheap spike shoes. They're really like one or two times use. A lot of the reviews said that these nuts fall off and you don't want those falling off in your epoxy. I loctited that with some red loctite overnight so it wouldn't fall off. What else I'm going to do is I've got a little bit of secret sauce that I'm going to be doing uh, towards the end once I coat it. I'm actually going to be using some acetone and some 91% isopropyl alcohol to add some more shimmer and some more like marble look. We'll see that at the end and we'll see how that turns out but I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos of them using that to put in the effects towards the end and I'm gonna try that. You're gonna need some, some rollers, some buckets to pour the stuff in so you can mix it a little bit and then a squeegee that kind of helps too and then drills and gloves and anything else that you might need to clean up with. So enough talking, we'll go ahead and start cleaning up this place, getting everything etched and getting this done. So the first step into this, we're gonna be pressure cleaning the floors. I've already swept out everything in here. I've cleared out everything on the floor, all the dust, everything out. I've broomed it out, brushed it out. We're gonna go in here and go over it with the pressure cleaner. And once we're done with the pressure cleaner, I'm gonna lay down some etch. So I'm gonna use that etch that it comes with it, which 
into the citrate. Once that's in a little bit, I'm gonna actually use muriatic acid. They don't really recommend that you use this anymore in their kits just because it's a little bit too toxic for the environment, but it is very effective. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some of that just to make sure I get a nice good etch once I clean this floor up. So this garage wasn't really that dirty. It was just a little bit of oil stain right here, which I put a little bit of super clean down on. And we're just gonna go ahead and let it soak and then just pressure clean this off. So if you guys don't have one of these little turbo jet nozzles for your pressure cleaner, I recommend picking one of those up. It makes the job really easy because that thing basically what it does is creates a vortex and a spin. So the pressure cleaner actually hits it from an angle and it removes a lot of the surface stuff a lot easier versus your traditional bits that it comes with up here. So I recommend getting one of those. I'll have a link down in the description for what I use on Amazon. I recommend using that if you don't have like a floor scrubber type one, but this nozzle makes quick work of a lot of stuff especially walls and everything else. So. So the next step is to etch the floor. So the first thing I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the citric acid that it comes with in the kit. I'll use this all up, then I'll follow up with the muriatic acid for like the tire tracks and the areas that I wanna make sure that I etch it really well so I don't get any hot tire pickup. But what you wanna do is get a two gallon jug. Little watering jugs come in two gallon sizes, so just fill that up. Fill that up with some etch and then mix it. They tell you to mix it thoroughly to make sure it fully dissolves before you start using it. Once you pour it down, let it sit for a little bit and scrub it. You can hear this stuff sizzling as it works in the etch. Let it work for a little bit, get a scrubber, and start scrubbing afterwards just to make sure that you get it nice and loose. So we let this floor dry overnight and you can see everywhere where I use the muriatic acid, it actually etched it a little bit better than the citric acid that comes with the kit. It leaves behind this white film and that's probably obviously because I didn't wash it quick enough or squeegee enough. So what I'm gonna do today, I'm gonna fix any imperfections I see just to make sure that we get all the contaminants out of here. Stuff like this right here where we got a little bit of concrete that's coming apart. I wanna make sure I get that before I coat it so that it doesn't pick up. I found some of these areas where they kind of patched it right here. So I actually gotta sand that down a little bit, smooth it out and feather it in. So we're ready to coat. We ended up taping up all the edges so that way we can cut in on those corners without getting paint on the walls. Got around the water heater over there. 
Other than that, once we start cracking these things open, we have about 30 to 45 minutes. It's pretty warm today, it's like 90 degrees, so we probably only have 30 minutes to lay each bag. When you get this, make sure it's not broken or leaking, because then you probably have to return it and get another one that's not. What you do is mix the part A to part B, and it's a burst pack, so you roll it, and it bursts into the other pack. Mix it up for a couple minutes inside the bag, and then cut the corner of the bag, and then you can pour it out onto the floor. about four or five hours of doing this coating, we were able to get all 12 packs onto this floor. We were able to get pretty good coverage on all the sections to make sure that we had a nice thick layer. There were some areas that were thinning out at towards the end. I actually had one more pack towards the end so I ended up just kind of redoing the thin area, especially out there by the garage entry. Basically two layers out there to give it a good coating. I used some of the extra to kind of fill in some of the soft spots and some of the thin spots around here, I just kind of poured it and let it flow out so it gives it that cool effect. We do have a bunch of little fish eyes and little dispersion marks, but that's from me using the acetone and that alcohol to kind of give us the effect. The acetone and alcohol droplets gives you that watery effect, as you can see on there, and it gives you a much better marbleization. So I am pretty happy with the way it came out, but we'll come back in the morning when we're doing the clear coat and any of the high spots I see or if I find any love bugs or any other bugs that end up dying in here, I want to sand those down and clear coat it. So it's been about 20 hours since we coated this and we're back on the floor now. I'm in here barefooted so I don't get any dust and dirt, but everything turned out freaking awesome as hell. You guys can see how everything is just reflecting off the edges, all the marbleization and the effects that we wanted turned out great. Look at all this. What we're gonna do today is uh, finish up with a clear coat. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up all the love bugs that landed and died on here. I'm gonna spray some acetone where those guys died just to flatten that out so when we put the clear coat on, it's fine. So another thing I noticed with it, I don't know if it was the brush or the way that the, some of the color and stuff mixed in the bag, but we ended up with a lot of these little granular that's in the surface and you can feel it as you're touching it. I'm not sure if it's the brush or from the actual mixing stuff that comes in the kit now, but it does add a little bit of texture to the surface, which I think after seeing it now with the gloss, that might be a good thing because it gives it kind of an anti-slip but it's like, it's not super smooth like you would expect from a really thick epoxy coating. For a DIY coating, I guess it turned out pretty well. So we're going with this rock solid top coat clear for this coating. Like I said earlier when I was introducing this video, this covers about 450 to 500 square feet on top of coated surfaces, which is more than enough to cover the 850 square feet that we have in this garage. It comes with an anti-skid packet plus uh, you know, your regular burst pack. I'm not going to use the anti-skid.
So it's been a couple days since we coated this and I let this clear cure. As you can see, this crater effect looks really cool. I was kind of disappointed in how the clear coat turned out as far as the coverage goes. I'm not sure if it was my roller or the way that I rolled it or whatnot, but I can see some of the areas. It looks like there was like a hydrophobic effect where the clear didn't really stick well to the existing clear that's here. And you can see these little bubbles and these little like uh, orange peel where there's like spots with clear and without clear. Overall, I think it's fine because the floor was already pretty shiny. And when I rolled it on, it probably didn't stick to the gloss that was already there. Other than that, you can see where I did all the effect, kind of like the crater look or the moon look. I used the acetone and the alcohol. The only thing with that is the way this coating is. I don't think it flows well enough where it can flow back in. Cause you can see some of these little craters that I did, literally craters where the epoxy didn't really fill in really well. And at least I was able to get some clear on it to give it a little bit more thickness. If I had to do it again, I probably wouldn't use the alcohol. I would use the acetone. I think the acetone dries fast enough where it gives you the cool effect. Over here, you can see where I used the acetone. It gave this like streaky flowing look, which looks pretty cool. One tip that I would recommend that you guys doing this, especially with the clear coat on top of the gloss already is, make sure that you're rolling evenly and getting good coverage. The problem with the color coat is it ends up being glossy. So when you roll the clear on, you don't know where you have real new clear and where it's just shiny. I noticed there's a few areas that I did where I literally missed little sections like four inch, five inch sections that have no clear because I could just see the gloss from the color and not the clear. You could see the roller marks where I kind of rolled around it and I just literally just missed it. So just kind of be careful with that. Uh, you know, if you do it more systematically than I did, then you should be able to get it covered. So one of the problems of working in Florida is this time of year, it's May, you got love bugs all over the place. So when I was coating this, the love bugs weren't that bad, but they did show up. You can see this guy right here just ended up in the actual clear coat there. So I'm gonna have to sand him down, maybe try to get most of him out and then just buff it shiny again. There was a couple other areas where they landed and I was able to just peel it out. Right here, I was able to peel them out. So he, just the wings are left. So I need to just kind of sand that with like a 2000 grit just to get it shiny again and cleaned up. So one of the good things about using the clear coat on top of the coating is the clear coat acts as a sacrificial layer. So in the future, if I wear down this clear coat or I scratch it or it gets too torn up from just use, I could just sand this floor with like a 600 grit fix any imperfections I find, and just spend $300 on more clear just to recoat it and get it back to its 100% shine again. I did have some issue with the rollers, those white dove rollers I got from Purdy. They ended up like leaving those little microscopic fibers in the coating, which left the texture. I'm not sure if that's from the roller or from the paint, but it appears to be from the roller. When I actually touch it, it feels like little fibers that were embedded in there, but they're like all over the place. And I'm not sure it's because I only use like two rollers for this whole floor to do the color and then one roller for the clear versus changing out rollers after each bag, which seems like a waste to me, uh, especially if you keep on rolling and you're not having issues with anything, but maybe that's the issue and I left it behind. But the only good thing about it is it leaves like a little texture, more like an anti-skid texture. So no one slipped when they're walking on this. Hey guys, thanks for following me on this multi-day journey on getting my dream garage started. As you can see, this is a great canvas and a blank canvas for me to start doing my YouTube videos and my car projects and all my other projects I do around the house in here. So I measured the ceiling in here and once you get past the initial part of the garage, the ceiling in here is like nine and a half feet, which is perfect for a four post lift or a two post lift. So I wanna go ahead and research those lifts and eventually get one right here behind me so I can do more car projects and bigger and better car projects. Remember for these DIY projects, it's pretty easy as long as you do your research. Remember if I can do it, you can do it too. So if you guys found this video helpful and useful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you guys need to know any of the products I use or any of the equipment or tools I use, check out the links down in the description. I'll have a list of all the stuff I use and all the products I use in case you guys want to do this stuff at home also. Anyways, if you guys are new to your channel and aren't following me, go ahead and subscribe to your channel so you can keep up with all my different projects I do around the house. I try to upload once a week, maybe twice a week when I have time. Anyways, I want to thank you for watching all the way to the end and I'll talk to you guys next time.